Good morning, guys. So, um, today's Saturday morning. It's this... No, sorry, it's Friday morning. Where am I? <laughs> it's Friday morning! It got disheveled because my husband's off, and so I always think it's a Saturday. It's a Friday. Um, I had somebody email me last night, and she had a really good question, and I wanted to make sure to get this out there because sometimes people don't know how to um, stand for things like family members getting born again especially when you're having to deal with your kids or brothers, sisters, or your parents. You know, maybe you're born again and your parents are not. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, and again, I always do this as an example so you know what to do because you have to know how to handle it on your own and how to make the word work, right? And how, how, you're, how the Lord tells us to stand on the word right? And what that means to stand on it. All right. So the basic, you know, um, I didn't get to the scripture. Maybe we'll do that some other time if we're still here. <laughs> Could be we're gone this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe September. I don't know. Whatever. Um, regardless, we occupy and redeem the time. Yeah. Okay. What is that? What does that mean? That's like, all right, great. So we stand on scripture. We speak scripture to change situations. Yeah, because we believe God like Abraham. He believed God. <clears throat> and he believed God's promise. I think that's in Romans 4, Hebrews. It's in one of those. I think Hebrews 11. And I think it's in Romans 4. Somewhere in there. Anyway. You take his word. You take a promise. And you keep speaking it over the situation, no matter what the situation is. Doesn't matter if it's for family members, if it's for job, you know, your job situation, if it's for, you know, finances, if it's for, you know, making sure you can pay your mortgage. You know what I mean? Um, if it's for health, if it's for, you know, relationships, it's, you know, it's all, the Lord works the same way. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So. We're going to go to promises that we have in scripture about, um, about our family. But first we're going to go to Hebrews 6. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just woke up like, you know, half hour ago. Um, Hebrews 6, 17 through 19. And um, this is, when I first started doing this, I had to really realize that God's word is true. And we've gone over scriptures in, in previous videos about his word is truth. He can't lie. It's not just that he won't lie. He cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie. And so when he makes a promise, it's a sure thing. You can, you can double down bet on that puppy. It is the word of God. It's truth. And that's the bottom line. And so no matter what things look like in the world, because it's going to look contrary it's always going to look contrary and the devil's always going to throw in, uh, you know, ideas into your head or sometimes he's going to get people to behave in a certain way to try and pull you off that promise and just know that that's deceit, that's a lie and that is not the truth and you just keep, con you just keep speaking the word and you just keep thanking God for his promise because it is so, yeah? There's a, a scripture in James 2.12 that says, so speak and so act as people should, who are to be judged under the law of liberty, under the law of freedom. You speak it and you act it. You act like it's so. You s declare it over your family. You declare it over that situation when you find out what the word says about it. Okay? All right. So Hebrews um, 6, 17 to 19. <clears throat> should have probably gotten my glasses. <laughs> Would have been much easier <laughs> okay 17 to 19 so Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded well see we were just talking about this good old good old Abe <laughs> so Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded in seeing the promise fulfilled because he waited patiently in faith meaning belief he waited patiently, believing, believing what the Lord told him, um, and in seeing the promise fulfilled. It is very common 
for people to swear an oath by something greater than themselves. For the oath will confirm their statements and end all dispute. So in the same way, God wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more forcefully to those who would inherit his promises, which is us. His purpose was unchangeable. God's purpose was unchangeable. So God added his vow to the promise. So it is impossible for God to lie, for we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. That is where we find his strength and comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unthinkable hope. Unthinkable means your head can't go there, your heart has to, or your spirit. It has to hope, that absolute expectancy on the word of God, right? Um, <clears throat> we have certain this certain hope, this godly hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions. It's, it's anchoring our souls because our souls are going to be giving us a fit when we're standing on the word of God, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, where am I? Uh, sorry. Unbrinkable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat, which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold and where Jesus, our forerunner, has gone before us. He is now forever our royal priest like Melchizedek. So... His promises are a sure and steadfast thing. You can count on them, okay? So now we're going to the promise that we have our family. So if you're standing for your kids or for, for your parents, for whomever else, it's just their tough luck you're in their family. I mean that in a good way. Um, by the way, I was reading a Passion Translation. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to take... Where I'm going back to... Where am I? King James? Yeah, King James. I'm going to go to Acts 2... 38 and 39. Okay. <clears throat> then Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, for the promise... Now, I'll, in case people get weird, um, you don't need to baptize in water to be saved. That's just an outward showing of what happens inwardly. So just, you know, bear that in mind. Also, this is also the second chapter of Acts. These boys are just coming out of, you know, Jesus being resurrected, everything else. So understand they're also talking from, from, from what they've moved through, what they've, what they've gone through. Okay. So, um, and the, uh, the spirit falling on Pentecost had just happened. And this is when, when Peter's preaching to everybody after the spirit fell on him, the Holy Spirit fell on him. <clears throat> okay. For the promise, so this is verse 39, Acts 2, 39. For the promise, that's God's unchangeable oath, meaning it's going to happen. If he promised it, it's done deal. Okay. For God's promise is to you. It's to you. And to your children. And to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call, which guess what? He calls everybody because sometimes people are like, well, but what if he calls some and not the others? No, he calls everybody. <clears throat> um, let me see if that's different and amplified. Let me just double check this. Yeah, I love this and amplified coolness. That's why it's good to have other translations. You know what I mean? Keeps you from getting weird. Um, 39. Where am I? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children <clears throat> and to and for all that are far away, even to and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself because he bids all to come to himself. Okay. And then you got another one. I mean, there's a, there's a, Quite a few places where the Lord talks about all your family saved. 
and then uh, it's Old Testament. I it might be might be in one of the books of Moses. I don't remember if it's like Exodus or one of those um, Leviticus, one of those where you have your family promised down to a thousand generations. So they're yours just because you're born again. You know Jesus. They're yours. Claim it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 16, 31. Yeah? Acts 16, verse 31. Okay. And I'm in King James, New King James. So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. So guess what? That means your household. That means anybody that's staying with you. That means, you know, you and your household. Okay? So you can stand on that. Now, how you stand on it, you start speaking it. And you're speaking it as you're, you're speaking to the Lord, but you're speaking it over your family, over your household. <clears throat> you're going to, um, you know, take your prayer time or whatever you do. If you, maybe you have time and, you know, you can only do it in your car when you're driving. I, I get that. I totally get that. Whatever your quiet time is with the Lord, that's when you do it. And you declare these scriptures, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, here we go. Heavenly Father, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, the name above all names, you said that your promise and your oath are a sure thing so that I can trust you. So I just give you glory. I give you honor. I just thank you for those promises because they are yes and amen, as you have said. So, Father God, I speak them because as you said, so speak and so act as people should who are to be judged under the law of liberty. So I speak it over my family. I thank you, Father God, as you said in the book of Acts, Acts 2 and Acts 16, that I have my entire household saved. I have my entire household filled with the Holy Spirit because they're born again and they know you. So I thank you, Father God, that my kids are saved. I thank you, Father God, that my parents are saved saved. I thank you, Father God, that my in-laws are saved. I thank you, Father God, that my nephews, my nieces, my entire family is saved. Hallelujah. And Father God, I'm asking because I know, and I'm doing this as, as an example, Father God, for people. But if I, if, if people have kids who are born again, but are misbehaving, I ask, Father God, to rise forth that anointing in them, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Lean on them, Holy Ghost. Lean on them. Keep them from getting into mischief. Keep their hearts steady. Pull them into you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for it, because it's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. And now I also, as a parent, I command their angels. You watch over them. Protect them. Keep them safe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that they are yours and you are theirs. Hallelujah. I thank you for their safety. I thank you for their protection. And I thank you, Father God, that they're strong in you and in the power of your might. Hallelujah. And for my entire family. Hallelujah. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Okay. That was for today. All right, you guys. I love you guys. Um, I probably will be back maybe Monday-ish, somewhere in there. We'll see as the Lord leads because um, it's just whatever may be, you know, is uh, needful for the body. Yeah? Okay. I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I can't even think. Where am I? Okay. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>